The new edition of Kugos Kidding S1 Pro Series is here and supposed to be the best budget dual suspension city scooter ever made. But is it? Let's inspect! Hi! Very good to meet you. I'm Michael. Nice to see you here. We're inspecting a lot of cool tech. Uh, yet another electric scooter and this one is supposed to be the most affordable dual suspension city commuter ever. That's the Kugel Kirin S1 Pro. I guess we can call it the second generation because I've inspected uh, the Kugel S1 Pro like three, maybe four years ago and this one is a bit shorter. You can see that for a person with my height of around 188 centimeters, hmm, a little bit short, but it comes with a lot of great promises like a 350 watt motor, dual suspension which is supposed to be rather good and how about the range? We're gonna find out soon enough. Is it a worthy choice? This is what we want to figure out. There are so many good city scooters these days but we have to admit every single scooter maker tries to challenge the Mi Scooter series or the 9 volt editions both of which are part of Xiaomi's ecosystem. So in this video I will mostly refer and compare to the results achieved by the market leaders and by the end of the video you should have good visibility of the whole picture and figure out whether this is the right choice for you. Unboxing has been a very pleasant task. Good to see that Kugo now have their new design colors throughout their whole portfolio. The upgraded S1 Pro is at the first sight really lightweight. Taking it out of the box is easy and I think it's the first sub 15 kilo scooter that I unpack in a long time. Very little effort to assemble it, it's just a handlebar to be mounted, a cable that you need to plug and four screws to be tightened. That's all. Everything else is prepared for you. I would definitely check the tightness of the factory installed screws because some of them were loose with the previous generation. Fast forward to now, a couple of weeks after riding it for the first time, no structural or assembly issues, so I hope your scooter is going to be delivered in such a good shape as mine. I also want to go quickly over the main specs so that we see which are the areas to focus on while doing more thorough testing. The motor is 350 watts, has three riding speeds and has a maximum of 30 km per hour speed. The battery is 7.5 amp/h, 42 volts, with a promise for range of up to 30 km. There's LED display screen to provide you with riding statistics and real-time speed info, 8-inch honeycomb solid tires, front and rear suspension, easy-to-use folding mechanism, front and rear light, IP45 waterproof rating and weight of close to 13.5 kilos. If you think the specs are great, I would agree they do sound fantastic, but there are a few catches. First of all, the positives. 30 km top speed, which is remarkable. It's 5 km per hour more than what the Mi Scooter 3 provides. And I think for city commuting it's great if that is compliant with your country's regulations. The motor is powerful enough. Uh, compared to the previous generation, Kugel have moved it from the front inside the rear wheel. So when it comes to braking, the concept is also very much changed uh, from, from more mechanical braking. Now we count just on the electrical brake and also this, they call it an emergency brake. Probably the greatest upgrade here is about the design and the materials because finally this thing feels made out of good quality and the folding mechanism unlike the first generation just requires you to press here yeah and we're done as usual for my videos, deep dive for each of these components to find out how good they actually are. The motor is 350 watts inside the rear wheel and it's responsible not only for the acceleration but also for the electronic braking. I can qualify it as ineffective because the maximum torque is only around 12 Nm, therefore the scooter can deal with inclines of just up to 15 degrees. For the record, Mi Scooter has above 16 Nm torque and uses a 300 watt motor. Acceleration with the Kugo scooter is kind of slow and you can feel that the motor is not on par with the flexibility and the overall performance of most other electric scooters from the past few months. But once you reach the desired speed, it's pretty easy to maintain it, furthermore you can enable cruise control. There are three grades, 12 km per hour, 20 km per hour and 30 km per hour. 
Because of everything explained about the motor so far, you can expect somewhat troubled braking, especially when the battery is close to empty, because it uses electric power in order to decrease the speed. Luckily, we can count on an emergency brake, which is a mechanical one and also treating the rear wheel. During most of the time, I was feeling rather uncomfortable braking, not only because of the ineffectiveness, but also because when riding on bumpy roads for my first 70 kilometers covered with the scooter, I've had nine power drops. Yes, the scooter has been shutting down unexpectedly by itself, and if this happens while we are cruising down the hill at high speed, it can get really fun and unpredictable having to brake only via the emergency brake. I hope this issue is limited to my unit only, but just in case, replugging this cable might fix it for you in case you experience it as well. I underline that luckily this thing didn't get any worse in time, which makes me think it might be related to the button or really this connector. If at some point you need to suddenly brake while riding at maximum speed, it's gonna take about 7 meters if you count on the electronic brake and you weigh around 90 kilos, like me. Few words about the tires, because they can be slippery. I generally avoid riding scooters with solid tires in rain, because the material has much worse grip qualities as compared to rubber, but since e-scooters mostly belong to shiny days, this one will at least give you no worries about flat tires, replacements, balance and pressure checking issues and similar. You pay for all of that through your comfort. Yeah, in some cases, solid tires feel almost as plastic ones. These honeycomb models obviously do not belong to the very comfy models. Luckily, here we have front and rear suspension, which can increase the riding comfort by a tiny bit. Honestly, looking at the footage and seeing how well the suspension responds to the pavement and other bumps, perhaps the feeling that I developed of it being useless is because of the constant jingling that you can hear when the road is not flat. This sound is something I've experienced with every Kugo scooter tested before, with exception for the S4 and the G3. In a matter of fact, I find the S4's fat pneumatic tires to be a better shock absorber than the whole suspension implementation on Kugo Kirin S1 Pro. I would therefore have really appreciated if Kugo have dropped the dual suspension mode and just added tubeless tires with slime. Perhaps the price was about to be cheaper rather than designing a suspension and also the scooter was about to be lighter as well. If you've had enough of mixed feelings around the components, the folding mechanism is a delight to use. It has nothing to do with Generation 1, which so many people tried to convince me was alright. It was not, and this is the reason why now in 2022 things tend to be simpler and a lot more reliable. Well done! So, going up the stem, here's the handlebar, quite narrow for my taste. There's an LED display where you can see the digits even on a sunny day, although it's gonna feel pale. Odometer, trip distance, current speed, this is the information that you can get in real time. No smartphone app, but you won't miss having such one, and there are certain configurations that you can apply. The lever on the right is to accelerate, it can start from a steel point, which is nice, the left, as we mentioned at the start, is for the brake. Double press the power button and this is going to switch on the front and the rear lights. Sadly, the position of the handlebar is not high enough and I wouldn't recommend this scooter to anyone taller than 180 cm. I felt awkward most of the time because of that and it looks like for a 144 cm body, it feels a lot more suitable. Drawbacks. Besides the height, there is the jingling noise caused by the suspension, the poor braking experience, the stiff feeling during riding, the ineffective motor, there is no pedestrian mode, no smartphone app, and I can see some regulation compliance issues because of the top speed and the lack of dual braking system. So the other fairly annoying thing uh, is, is about the range, because with my kind of riding and weight of around 90 kilos, I, I hardly got beyond 17 kilometers per charge and advertised it was supposed to be somewhere around 30. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of in between, you know, this feeling of nothing being really great about this e-scooter with having mediocre performance, okay construction, a lot of other things that are not superb, but on the other hand, this is 
a $300 e-scooter with 350 watt motor and dual suspension and despite its shortcomings I, I can't say it's a bad choice obviously compared to the Mi Scooter series not as good but a bit cheaper so which what would you go for you know something which is more affordable with more features or you prefer to have a safe choice by ordering something like the Xiaomi Mi Scooter. Let me know in the comment section below the video and as usual you're gonna find a link to the product with possibly a discount if I manage to squeeze something cool for you and I really look forward to seeing you in our next episode for more cool tech inspections. Have a great day!